This is what I shot the uh, um, Thick Lizzie with. So that worked out really good. And here we have all the parts for the new one. I got it all broken down. Got it open up. Going to do a little bit of uh, pre-use stuff that I learned. And that made the other brushes really nice. So hopefully we can do the same thing with there. So first thing you do is you break it all down. Clean it all up and, and get the, some alcohol run through it. Get all the, the dust and, and, and manufacturing stuff out of it. And then we start putting it back together again. So, with that process, I'm just taking some good old turtle wax polishing compound. And we're going to start by polishing the needle. And uh, get that nice, nice and smooth and, and shiny and acting really good. See how fast the, the, uh, Oxide, oxide comes off it from sitting in storage or warehouses or whatever before it got to me. So this is this is a pretty much a must do step for any new airbrush. You just got to be careful while you're doing it uh, that you don't bend your needle and you don't stick your fingers. Believe me, these things hurt and they will get infected really quick if you stick that point into your finger. So always Always pull, pull it through the cloth, twist it as you pull, get down to your tip, and uh, twist it as you work it slowly out. You'll feel it, you'll feel it get smoother and smoother and smoother. So, how much you want to sit and do this is up to you and your tolerances for fiddly stuff, but... The more you do this, the better your, your brush is going to be. So, I'm going to spend a couple minutes doing this. And then I'll come back when the needle's all polished and, and cleaned up and we're ready for reassembly. Okay, so, I've done all the polishing. Should be ready to start putting back together again. You can see how much, how much of the oxide they come off. And uh, you can see where it started. Next side, and then next side where it started getting cleaner, and down to that where there's barely anything on there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a fresh clean rag, and we're going to keep polishing on it until we see no more black stuff coming off it. Don't forget to get the, the back end in and all that. Makes it grip better and yada, yada, yada. Looks like we're doing okay for that. There's not much coming coming off it anymore. So we can start the assembly procedure. So first thing I'd like to do, and actually first thing that needs to be done is I don't know if you can see that. You can see the dark marks on that. Looks like it's been gripping that rubber and stuff, so I guess we're going to do a little polishing on that too. Just a few quick turns to, to clean it off. And I'll go back. I'll go back later when uh, I've got to dial it in and make sure the needle's working right and all that. And uh, I'll polish the sides of the trigger here, get that to be all smooth, and the same thing right in there where it all slides. Make sure there's usually a little bit of a almost like flashing in that hole there sometimes, so that that makes your trigger kind of jerk as you pull back. So that's something to be aware of on on various airbrushes, not so much the masters here or, or like the Iwatas, but some of the other name brands or non-name brands that have come out, the cheaper ones. So, starting with here, you'll see there is, uh, there's grooves in the trigger there, and 
there is a hollow spot at the back of it. And so that's how you know what's front and what's back. The grippy part goes to the front and the bevel goes to the back. So when you pull back, it, it wraps around the handle. So we're going to struggle to get that down in that little grommet or not. It just fell right in. That's always a good thing. And uh, we get our assembly in here. Finish up the trigger. What I like to do is is get it so that is right at the edge there, and I'll go two turns in past that. That kind of gives me a, a starting point for the trigger feel. Right now it's super soft. So we'll go one, one, or half, one and a half. Two. That's a little bit more stiff, so it guarantees it. But you can hear, you hear it rubbing here, you hear it rubbing here. I got to get some oil specific for airbrushes. I have some beard trimmer oil I'm going to do later to get started. But for now, we're going to start out basically stock out of the box other than the polishing of the needle. Be very careful when you see this in. You gotta be careful when it goes through this, this section here of the body and you start to go in the, the, the needle packing here so you don't catch the tip and, and fold the tip over. And then when you put it in, just don't force feed it just so it barely seats in there. Tighten your lock down. So, now we're gonna Put the valve, the air valve in there. Yeah. See how slow that's coming back up? That's going to be an issue. So, what we need to do is test it out, put some pressure on it, and work it a little bit, and see if we get free up here. seem to be freeing up so what we're going to have to do is take that apart and take that apart and uh, free that up so put the uh, put the quick connect on there that's the system I've been using off. You know. Now we can see that's that's moving freely, so that tells me something in there is binding, which it shouldn't. Because Maybe I had it too snug and a gasket rolled over in there. But it seems to be behaving. So, you know, we can. No leaks. Okay, so it's behaving. You know, I can put it back in. Barely snug this up. Helps if I get on the camera. Barely snug that up, so I, so when I take off the quick disconnect for the other brushes, it doesn't. 
it doesn't uh, pull that valve out again. So, trigger seems to be working okay now. And I'm going to cap on the end here so I don't bend the needle. And one of the things that has uh, caught my attention Now you see this is only threading in so far, that's because I don't push that return spring all the way in. So as long as that's snug there. And then one of the reasons I got this, this brush, this particular brush, is trigger adjustment here and the MAC valve. So which I just learned is not going to function because the way I set that up is not letting this part go in far enough to stop the trigger. So I guess we're going to run this in until it seats. I may have to get a, a lighter spring for what I like doing. Still got another turn or two. There we go. Now it's seated. Okay, so that adjustment's there. Now I can. I can set that so it doesn't allow the trigger to come back at all. And I'll adjust that as I learn the mixed paints and stuff as to how far I want it to pull out every time to adjust, to adjust the line that I want. Once you start getting that, then you can start playing with your Mac valve. There you go, now you hear it adjusting. And that's how you get your super fine, pretty lines. Now whether I can do it or not, that's a different story, we'll see. But for now, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to run some thin paint through it. Get a, get a base coat down here and see how it shoots. Play around with the uh, trigger travel. Get to know the feel of that. And already it feels like it's running fairly smooth. So, that is that. Now, last time I was messing around with these, uh, I got the uh, the point two brush down to let's see here we go here we go down to being able to do that so we're getting there this was my my build up on seeing how fine I can get the lines and uh, I believe this is. This is all actually done with the uh, point five, not the point two. So it might have been, it might have been the uh, Iwata, but I think this was this whole piece of cardboard was testing with the uh, uh, masters. So I'm gonna shut down and mix some more paint and uh, see what we can do with this beastie. So let's see how much of this I can spill. <clears throat> and it looks like I'm going to start at 20 pounds and uh, since we've got the Mac valve we can change whatever we want there so let's see what we can do
Yeah, you can see how, see how shiny and wet that is when you hit it with the air. That's definitely too thin for the air pressure. I'm going to cut the air pressure back and uh, see what we can do. I think I got this camera too close because I got to kind of shoot over top of it and talk behind it. <clears throat> See, it's a little better. It doesn't dot up like that when you put the air to it. So we're going to close it off just a little bit more. Now, this is a .2 airbrush, and I am doing a full trigger pull now. You see, it's still, it's still pretty wet. Let's cut it back even more. There we go. Now we're getting around to like another little bit of a turn there. Try to shoot a little higher. Yeah, you see now, you see how really wet it was and heavy the first times. And as it goes down, it gets drier and drier. Now we're starting to spray like like how I like it, anyway. Good coverage. Nice uh, atomization. And still, <laughs> ugly as hell for something that's supposed to be black. I may even go, ah, yeah, got myself with a needle. I may go just a little bit more with a, with a Mac valve just to see what that does. And see, now we're getting into a finer pattern. Still getting good coverage, still getting good atomization. Now let's play around with a trigger here. So we're moving closer. All right. <clears throat> gonna stop there for a second. I'm gonna move the camera down and uh, I'm gonna start playing around with the uh, paint flow. Okay, so fresh area. Got the uh, mech valve with a good start. Got the trigger pull dialed in just a little bit more. So now we're gonna start moving closer and see. So we can get for finer lines. Okay, it's pretty heavy for fine. Let's dial it in a little bit more. Okay. Getting closer, getting smaller. So now I'm almost about a quarter inch away from the paper. So let's double up the hands and see what we can do. Get a little closer. A couple of dots. Pressure out just a little bit more. Tighten that up just a little bit. All 
Uh, that's a little too far. Gets very touchy right about there. Having that adjustment on the back there makes it really get easy to get consistent dots and stuff. So far I'm, I'm really liking this. I'm sure with a little bit of practice and some more manipulation. I think we're to the point we got tip drying going on. So yeah, so far this seems to have a fair amount of adjustability and repeatability. That's the big thing. Yeah, see see how much heavier that is? Just that little bit of touch on the Mac valve. There we go. So, I'm going to play around with this and get some practice in, spraying larger areas, more fine lines, use up some more of this nasty black paint that turns out green. And uh, once we get a nice smooth base of black on here, I'm going to switch over to white or red and do some line practice. So, we will be back 